Mark, take a look at this because this is gonna. This is just. This is just something like. Uh, I think it was Anya Parampal who shared this tweet. She goes, "Don't make me vote for this guy or something." Or I don't want to vote for this guy or something to that. Is he trying to make me vote for him? You know, obviously, uh, we're gonna have to do dissidents boys here in about twenty minutes. They're gonna talk to uh, you know. We're gonna talk about a lot of things. Um, when you talked about your divorce from Zelensky leaving your side piece and going back to your mm -hmm. wife, uh, you know, obviously, I think I had like a little bit of a divorce from RFK myself. I was very, very disappointed in what he had to say. Uh, he didn't just uh, make himself to be pro-Israel by saying, I stand with Israel. They have a right to exist. He almost okayed the carpet bombing that was to come, that has been going on the showing the last few days. Uh, but he also presented no solutions. So Donald Trump said this the other day. This was at West Palm Beach, Florida. Listen to what he has to say. And I think people have to understand this. When it came to the whole election system over here, the situation with the 2020 election, when Donald Trump was up in arms, he had Giuliani and his whole team out there. I think 90% of what they were pushing, they were correct on. They had 10% of, of BS when they were trying to blame, you know, uh, uh, what's his name, Hugo Chavez for the mechanism that was in play or trying to blame China, some of them. It was just mind-blowing. But for the most part, he was talking about the structure of the elections, and they were trying to push back. They had a lot of cases they were going to go to. Well, B.B. Netanyahu was one of the first to congratulate Joe Biden in that election, and I think that stung. Now, I don't know if this is a personal vendetta for Donald Trump, and it's his narcissism, that, like what B.B. did to him, what's making him push back. But he's also saying some things over here that a lot of American politicians wouldn't say. He could have just seen a few videos from a bunch of Israelis saying, how in the hell did this happen? Yeah. If you got all the... He calls himself Mr. Security. Like... Well, that's a great, he should keep that nickname forever, sarcastically, dude. Take a look at Donald Trump here. Listen to this. You know, Hezbollah is very smart. They're all very smart. The press doesn't like when they say it. Uh, but Hezbollah, they're very smart. I'll never forget that BB Netanyahu let us down. That was a very terrible thing. I will say that. They've got to straighten it out because they're fighting potentially a very big force. They're fighting potentially Iran. And when they have... People saying the wrong things. Everything they say is being digested by these people because they're vicious and they're smart. And boy, are they vicious because nobody's ever seen the kind of sight that we've seen. But they cannot play games. So we were disappointed by that. Very disappointed. But we did the job ourselves, and it was absolute precision, magnificent, beautiful job. And then uh, Bibi tried to take credit for it. That wasn't good. That didn't make me feel too good, but that's all right. So they got to strengthen themselves up. And they said, gee, I hope Hezbollah doesn't attack from the north because that's the most vulnerable spot. I said, wait a minute. You know, Hezbollah is very smart. They're all very smart. The press doesn't <laughs> like when they say it. You know, I said that President Xi of China, 1.4 billion people, he controls it with an iron fist. I said, he's a very smart man. They killed me the next day. I said he was smart. What am I going to say? But Hezbollah, they're very smart. And they have a national defense minister or somebody saying, I hope Hezbollah doesn't attack us from the north. So the following morning they attacked. They might not have been doing it, but if you listen to this jerk, you would attack from the north because he said that's our weak spot. But Hezbollah, they're very smart. Why are they saying he's praising him if he's just stating the obvious thing? Why but is that you're praise? You're not allowed to state the obvious. There's nobody. Listen. The, the tweet the, for today's show said Trump praises Hezbollah. Doesn't sound like praise. Sounds he does. Like he's he's just saying a, that they're smart. That is praising really, on a geopolitical uh, scale when everybody out an there, everybody an else, idiot. Hezbollah and Hamas, well, anybody they're who barbarians. Thinks, wait, 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 wait. Anybody who thinks that's praise, you are a moron. Can I put that out there? He said they're vicious. That's the important thing. <laughs> I don't know why we even tweeted that on this show. That's not praise. That's just acknowledging the person that you're trying to fight. Is it not? It is, but in this, in in the realm of American foreign policy, why are we speaking that stupid in congressional language? ways? They never say that Hezbollah is smart. They say they're vicious. They're barbaric. They can't let them believe. They can't let the public believe that they are strategically smart in what they will do. So this is, it, once again, this is stuff They're that are They're smarter than the government It's common Israel. sense to us, but for American politics, you know what I'm saying? And he also called the defense minister of Israel stupid. This guy's stupid. He's dumb. He's I huge. was taken in by the, the clickbaiting of the tweet of today's show that he praised them, and he did not.
Is anybody in, in American politics had this type of attitude towards Israel? Is the, is the question right, right now? I mean, he and Donald Trump is smart where he says, "Well, you know, we're going to support them," but they were dumbs. We're not happy with that. No, no, he didn't say them. He said BB, yeah. which is true, and also Israel is saying that. So, uh, like, only morons that live here. And I just yesterday, I, I told you I did the seller podcast, and these aren't even people that are dumb. These are people I like. I'm talking to. They're Arabs and Jews and Israeli, and none of them know anything about anything yeah and it's stunning to me how much they don't know and they don't care to know they're emotional right now what he just said is the closest thing to the truth of any of the people that i've seen so far who are in charge and should know more than me than any of the people in congress too as well than anybody they running don't for know president jack shit about I know. any of it doesn't this make it like you know what I, I had the issue i told you about what what rfk said it's like Oh God! Is he trying to get my vote? This guy he over chose? here chose no because you're not gonna. You're not. See, Trump already did all this stuff for Israel, like that. People said, "Don't do that and move the the embassy. Abraham's Accord, moving the yeah. embassy." So into him Tel Aviv saying to Jerusalem, an and I, my dude, I know they'll think it would know him because he's a smart guy and he's fair. But I read the Bibi Netanyahu stuff about we need to support Hamas 2019 that he said. And I watched, I watched like a couple people, oh, okay, well, they thought that would divide and conquer. And I goes, I don't know if I believe that. It's so emotionally upsetting to an American yeah. who just like still believes in neocon bullshit. Okay. He could, ooh, sorry, my, it's sorry. okay. He couldn't accept it. Okay. He will though, but yeah. Trump is just blurting it out right now. So this is my question to Mark Sloboda, and this is my question to you, Kurt. Yeah. If you're a, whatever you classify yourself policy policy wise in america if you're a voter who wants to see some type of peace for real with this situation and some type of pushback against israel does donald trump is he not coming for your vote here with this here because you might think you might think well well donald trump just told said the the netanyahu's a donkey which we don't hear anybody say i mean Joe Biden, when he got to Israel, it's like he had one thing he had to do. He had to walk into the stands and hug Bibi because he wasn't the prime minister there. Like, that was his one job. How is that guy still the right? prime minister? Well, he left and he came back. And Was it the drawing of the of the cartoon bomb that really moved people? Despite I, Mark And Mark, let's get two answers for this. Is Donald Trump giving you some form of, of opening of hope? I know you're not following a lot of American politics there, but if you want some form of, like, honesty in the middle east here i mean donald trump is he not coming for your vote here and also too what role did he have to play in this particular attack from the palestinian resistance last saturday okay so i mean first you know i emigrated to russia i'm a russian <laughs> citizen now right technically i still have american citizenship but i divorced myself from american politics you know i used to to do work for the Democratic Party. And uh, I uh, was chairman of Democrats abroad when I first moved here. I, I have nothing to do with the Democratic Party, with American politics. I don't believe you're a democracy, not in any real substantial form. Obviously. I don't think, hmm. yeah, I, I, I don't believe that voting, you know, I mean, if it makes, if it's cathartic for you, fine, you know, knock yourself out. You know, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't I don't believe in it. I don't believe that uh, that U.S. presidents are actually allowed to change U.S. foreign policy. Donald Trump came in the one one consistent for he didn't say much consistent about anything. But the one consistent foreign policy thing he said when he was elected the first time was he's going to improve relations with Russia. And what happened when he became president? He hired a whole bunch of neocons and uh, relations with Russia sank to the worst that yeah. they had been. Cuban missile. Mike crisis. Pompeo's defended him. Mike in a Pompeo, hearing. yeah. The walrus. American, Mike Pompeo, the walrus. that guy did a lot to screw with Russia. <laughs> yeah, was I more, can't take it away from him. The walrus. Uh, John Bolton. I mean, it was more about Latin America with him, but uh, yeah. John Abrams. Was it John Abrams or is that, what's his name? Uh, Elliot Abrams. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And then Biden comes in and then brings Newland. You know, the other. Sullivan <laughs> the, the and Neil Blinken. Godmark yeah, I know. In, right? She's a great lady. He, I'm, I'm sorry. Ben Rhodes called it the blob. You can call it the deep state, the U.S. foreign policy. I call it the patriarchy because I'm a feminist. They run the country, right? Trump Trump was, the problem with Trump is that why the, the, the elite fear him so much is they can't, they, they don't, they can't guarantee that they can control him. Mm -hmm. They did the first time. 
because they said, you let these neocons run your foreign policy or the, the Republican senators uh, in uh, in the Senate will vote to impeach you with the Democrats. Right. That that that, that, was, that was the threat. I'm, I'm almost certain. Yeah. Right. So he folded. Right. You know, the problem with Trump is he believes pretty much whoever talked to him 15 minutes ago what he said. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a chaos bomb. Right. You, you, right. They can't guarantee that they can control him. That's why they fear him so much. And especially on foreign policy, that can't be allowed. So as an outsider who wants U.S. hegemony, uh, you know, uh, around the world to stop trying to be the hegemon and pursuing wars and regime changes and, you know, you know the things they do all around the world. A chaos bomb like Trump is either it's a roll of the dice. It's, um, you know, you don't know what exactly what you're going to get, but it could break everything. <laughs> so I enjoy watching Trump's theatrics. You know, I don't actually like popcorn, but it's like watching popcorn from the outside. What's he going to do next? Right. You know, what are they going to do to try and stop him? Uh, it's interesting, uh, you know, on, on a on a kind of seat edge of the seat of Armageddon the you know theatrical production value um and I love seeing the liberal elite you know on both sides of the aisle because they're both sides now absolutely froth and lose their minds over Trump that's that's never ceases to be amusing do I like the guy personally no no I, I think he's revolting but is he more or less revolting than Joe Biden no I mean in, in some ways when he says things like Hezbollah is smart, you know, like as, you know, uh, uh, Kurt pointed out, you're not allowed to say things like that in, in, in U.S. politics. Right. Yeah. You know, that's because that's we're amazing. Not smart. We're not smart. <laughs> you know, there's a, a, there's a, a cultural tradition in Russia about the idiot or, you know, like the mentally handicapped person who is allowed to speak truth to the czar. He's the only one who's allowed to um, uh, speak truth to power because He's an idiot, right? I mean, and Trump sometimes is just brilliant that way. I mean, he tried to make peace with North Korea. Where did that come from? I mean, was it just <laughs> Dennis Rodman who convinced them? I have no idea. I suspect it was. Policy, of course, they destroyed it. His own administration destroyed it. But that was like an amazing thing. And it came from Trump out of nowhere. Yeah. 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 Are you surprised, that, surprised that, that the random chance? Oh, is it echoing? The random chance of Trump it actually brought us less close to World War III than the deliberate actions of the adults in the room taking back over. That that is very true, and it's so frightening. Uh, you know, it, it just means that you can't you can't operate on on logic on on ideas of you know that the adults in the room are better <laughs> than the idiots because they're not. I mean, Joe Biden has brought us to the, the, the brink of World War III. Now he's bringing us to another brink of World War III. Right. It's amazing. So before let's finish up right now, Mark. Uh, tell us what response, uh, if there's any responsibilities that Trump bears when it comes to this situation with uh, Israel and Gaza because – Maybe the Abraham's Accords, maybe moving the embassy uh, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem would have angered this whole entity within Gaza, a lot of people are saying. But there are a lot of people out there saying if Donald Trump was in office, the situation would be a lot better than Joe Biden now calling the shots. Your thoughts? That's uh, really hard to say because Trump was much closer to both Saudi and Israel. And obviously this this fireball thing of recognizing uh, Jerusalem, moving the embassy there. Um, it That alone had the potential to blow things up. And I think it helped create, you know, the tension. But if Trump hadn't done it, would the tension have increased anyway? There, There isn't a firm link that I can see. Okay. It's, it's possible. And the personal dynamics might have changed things because – like Would I said, you have Trump, rather had Trump in office right now to deal with the situation than Joe Biden? It's a, it's a counterfactual. It's a it's a counterfactual, and the answer is I don't know yeah. because Trump is 
is is this roll of the dice, this chaos bomb. You don't know which way he's going to go on any given issue at any time. Hey, come see us doing the live shows. We're going to be in Dallas, Houston, San Diego, Bloomington, Illinois, Indianapolis, Levittown, New York, Red Bank, New Jersey, Wilmington, Delaware, Covina, California, Burbank, California, and Oxnard, California. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. See you at a live show. Mm-hmm.